Welcome to Projects for All. My name is Mike and today, today we got a new table saw to check out. This is the Rage 5S. It's the only table saw made by a company called Evolution. It's multi-material, it's metal, it's wood, all with one blade. I am freaking excited because I wanted to check one of these things out since I discovered this probably five years ago. We're gonna do an assembly video today. We're gonna do a full assembly. We're gonna calibrate it. The calibration's on the end. Check the chapters. If you wanna jump ahead and that's all you're after, check that out. We'll do the full calibration of every part. The biggest complaint about this saw in the online reviews is that the instructions suck. And yeah, they suck. I downloaded the UK version online. I've read them twice. I have no idea what the hell is going on. So we're gonna get it out of the box. We'll figure it out. Let's get our spanners and let's get moving. See what's in the box. Wow, it's a lot of plastic. This thing is 350 bucks. Makes it a strong contender for a budget saw. But a budget saw with so much functionality on paper, it makes it absolutely irresistible if you're me. Plastic adjusting gears, plastic everywhere, plastic. I don't know. Blade guard. Miter gauge. This is the shortest miter gauge I've ever seen. Bad wheels. End caps. Clamp. Hardware. Well, wow, ABS plastic, holy cow, there's a lot of plastic on this thing. Lots of plastic, but it cuts metal. So after unpacking everything and looking at all the components and reading the directions like seven times, there's no way that I'm going to be able to tell you as I follow along with the directions how to do it. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely some of the worst directions I've seen in a long time. So what I'm going to do is put the whole thing together so I actually understand what I'm looking at and then I'll take the whole thing back apart and do it again and we'll film that. I'll see you guys tomorrow night. So I'm in the middle of putting this together. This frame here, there's a latch here. This piece attaches with some carriage bolts, plastic spacer, and a nut on this side. No big deal, right? However, this part here, actually I think it's this one. The outside part isn't drilled bright. And this bolt's going in on an angle, and I can't get it out through this hole right here. So, let me show you what we're really looking at. Like, man, it's off. And no amount of tweaking. I got a screwdriver in here, pulling on this bolt, pulling this thing even every which way. No amount of me forcing this is going to get this bolt through here. It's just too far off. So, what would I normally do in this situation? If I wasn't trying to make a video out of this, I would get my files and I would file all four holes until I could get this force through here. And then I would just forget it ever happened. That's what I would do. But that's not what we're here to do. We're here to see if this is a quality product that you should spend 350 bucks on. And that's total nonsense. So I'm gonna call customer service. It's Tuesday night. We're calling customer service. We're gonna see what they say. We'll see how fast 
these guys can get some replacement parts out here and make this right. And yeah, I'll see you guys in a few days. So I called customer service right at the end of their day. They were about to close. The guy said, text me some pictures and I'll see what I can do. So I text pictures to him. He said, I'll call you tomorrow, which he did, but I missed the call. And they followed up and they called me the second day. And I talked to him, I gave him my address, and then not even 24 hours later, after giving him my address, this was on my porch on Saturday morning, with, I'm hoping, the correct parts. I have no idea what's in the box. It's not a saw. It's just the replacement parts. Well, let's see what customer service said. Awesome. So rather than taking a guess at the part that I needed, customer service sent an entire new frame down here with a complete set of hardware. New wheels, all new tubes. Not bad, man. Not freaking bad at all. For one tube, just to be safe, they sent the whole assembly down here. Let's put it together. Let's see if this stuff is A-OK. -okay. You can't ask much more, man. A++ on customer service with Evolution. I'm happy. So let's break down the hardware real quick. From left to right, four machine screws. This is for connecting two tubes together, which I'm going to show you all this, of course. You have the two larger machine screws for connecting this support piece right here. You get a little machine screw with a nut and two washers for your hose support on the end of your saw. You get eight carriage bolts with 13 mil nuts. These little ones are eight mil. You get eight of these. These are for connecting tubes together and these plastic spacers go in between the tubes. You have these five millimeter Allen, 10 millimeter nut with washers. This is for connecting the first two bent tubes to the bottom of the saw. You obviously get your wheels. You get two axles. These are pound in axles. They each come with two nut, two washers, different size washers, and a 13 mil nut. So there's your hardware. Let's look at the tools real fast and then we'll slap this thing together. And then you need an eight, a 10, and a 13 millimeter socket. You could use wrenches. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter wrench and a five millimeter Allen, Phillips head screwdriver, and some kind of rubber mallet. All right, you get two loops to use. You want the shorter, wider one, this one. Grab this piece with the feet. Now, when I first put this together, these here are elongated this way a little bit. So what I did was I took a channel lock and I just gave them the gentlest little squeeze. And that rounded them out and I was able to fit this in here. So this loop, this hoop here has two holes, two holes on this. Put that in. You're gonna grab your four shorter machine screws. You might have to tweak it a little bit to get them in there. And then our little nuts for the back side. And that's it. We're gonna do this first. We'll do the easy stuff first that we can just put together. And then I'll show you, we'll get the saw up here and I'll show you how the whole thing goes together. And then just a Phillips and an eight mil. All right, so we got this piece done. Let's move on to the next. Grab your piece with the latch, with this latch facing up. You got two little holes, one on either side. Grab your support piece, hole, 
longer machine screw, the Phillips. They go in from this side. A little eight mil nut on the other side. No washers for these. Support piece installed. So we got our larger carriage bolt. It's going to go in here and it's going to go through this. You want to make sure that the roll pin is on this side. Carriage bolt, spacer, and then through that pipe right there. Now that we have that side done, the trickiest part, at least for me, was getting these spacers in here because you have to spread the pipes apart. And in some of the later steps, it gets kind of difficult to do. So you get your bolt here. When you're all done with this piece, you should have your roll pin here, got your spreader there, and got your latch. It should fit together just like that. These are your mounting points right here. Two on either side. It's the right side of the saw with the big extension. This is the left side with the little extension. We got these two with the bent side. They go with the bent part near the big extension. One on either side, five mil Allen, a nut and a washer. Just goes in from the bottom. We're gonna use, there's four holes on the bottom of this. We're gonna use the two inner holes. Two inner holes, not the outers, both sides inner. So we've got our frame with the latch. Latch should be, should be facing down like this. Here's the front of your saw. We're going to attach these holes here to these square holes here on the inside. And we're gonna put a spacer between them and put large carriage bolts in it just like that. Carriage bolt. Spacer. And then a nut. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Other side. Carriage bolt. Spacer. That was a lucky first try right there. So now we have this side attached. This is the side with the power switch. We got the latch facing down. And we got one more piece to attach. So this is our last big piece to bolt on. You're gonna lay it down like this with the closed end facing the saw and the feet in the back. The holes on the end here correspond with these holes right here. So when we're done, we'll bolt it together and we should be able to pivot it just like that. All right, so here's actually the hardest part I thought the first time I did this. You have this frame attached. You have this frame attached. See this hole and this hole? We're gonna line them up 
and we're gonna put a spacer between these and we're gonna put carriage bolts in these. There's plenty of gap there now. That gap's there because this new piece that customer service sent isn't twisted. It's still a little tight fit. Ugh. Yeah, it'll be a struggle, just a little. Oh, that was so much easier than the first time. All right, last but not least, got this hole here. That is for our axle. They're a little tight, they're press fit. But it really doesn't take much to get it in. So you got your washer with the fat hole, washer with the skinny hole, which goes on the outside of your wheel, and then your nut. So you guys let me know in the comments, what should I do with that frame? I mean, it still functions. It's a little messed up. So we left this wing loose. The instructions tell you to do this first, but I don't think it makes any difference. And I find it's gonna be easier now. We're doing the calibrations. We're gonna check the saw. Now we're gonna tighten this thing down. It comes loose like this out of the box. Front and rear rails are loose, they move. The instructions tell you, you close this all the way. What we're gonna do first is release our extension lever, which is underneath here. We have this loose, we're gonna push this all the way up against the saw here, and we're gonna move our scale to zero. So we'll set our pointer right on zero. So it tells you to do that, but it doesn't tell you what to do with this back rail. I'm going to show you why you should put it just flush with the end of this, about. You can put it in a little bit if you want. We have the front rail on zero, and you could tighten these two bolts under here like this if you wanted to. But I'm going to tell you if you do that, if you do that, what's going to happen is when you pull the whole thing out, it's going to run right past your roller, it's going to punch out your cap, and obviously you don't want that. So if you keep this about flush with the end here, when you pull it out, you'll hit the stop in the front and still have more space on this side. So we've got our front rail at zero, our back rail is sitting flush, we're going to use our old trusty Harbor Freight magnet trick. These tool holder magnets. A viewer gave me this tip and I still love it. So there's nothing magnetic about this table. There's no steel here, but we'll put it on the bolts. It'll hold it good enough. Double check, we're still on zero. So now this is flush. We can check with our straight edge, make sure we're where we want to be. And now we can tighten down the four bolts underneath on either side of this. Under the wing, you got two little hex head bolts. I hope you can see them. There's one here and one over here. And we're just going to tighten these down. All right, so when we do our overview, I'm going to go into this in probably more detail, but we have to put our blade on to calibrate everything to the blade to make sure everything's straight. So we're going to throw our blade on. It's got an arrow on it, so it's going to go with the print on this side. There's a washer inside here on the back side of the arbor. One inch has this lip. Five eighths has no lip, so the arbor is five eighths. The blades that come with the saw, or at least the evolution blades, are one inch. So we're going to use the side with the lip. It's going to fit on there just like so.
We'll put that on there. Obviously, we want our carbide teeth coming at us. Of course, I've already dropped this bolt down in there and it gets stuck in the dust extraction and you can take your magnet on a stick and shove it right up the back of the port there and get your bolt out. And we'll tighten our blade on. There we go. One blade installed. This is just ABS plastic. So normally I'd show you, you know, turning the screws and making this flush with the tabletop, but there is no screws on the table or on this. Just flops down in there. You can use the wrench to lock it down, but 100% it is not completely flat. So if you want a flat one, check Etsy. I have good luck on Etsy for stuff like this. I'll look too. If I find some, I'll put a link in the description. You can find it there. Otherwise, you're making your own. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure our blade is totally in line and straight with our miter slot. We'll use a ruler to do it. We're going to check it here and then we're going to rotate the blade back so we get the same spot in the blade and we're going to check it here. So I'll pull you in tight so we can have a look and see exactly where we're at. So here's our first measurement. Totally straight on the blade, four and five eighths. We're exactly four and five eighths to the edge of this. So let's check the back side. On the back side, exactly four and five eighths again. So perfect, exactly where it should be. So now we know our blade is straight. We can go ahead and check everything else against the blade. So I flip their saw over. This is the back side. You got your dust port right here, your power cord. And down here, let's zoom in and have a look. There's a couple nuts in a slot, and this is the back side of your assembly that attaches the, the saw motor and mechanism to the table. And it looks like it's adjustable. You may have to loosen the bolts on the face of the table but it looks like you can adjust this. So you can pitch your blade back and forth if it's off, and that's really good. The instruction manual does not allude to this at all, and it gives you, tells you to check your blade, but doesn't tell you what to do if you have a blade problem, and I suspect this is how you handle that. Mine's perfect. I really hate loosening these and fiddling with it when it's already good, so I'm gonna leave it alone, but just so you know, it looks like it's possible. So the riving knife needs to be completely in line right down the center of the blade. Mine is off. If I give it just a tiny bit of pressure, it goes right into line. But it's not perfect. Looking down here, you can use your included wrench and there's your adjusting bolt for your riving knife, which allows you to loosen it. And I'm sure if you took the bolt out, you could just take the riving knife off. And all it does is loosen this plate. Uh, this plate has no adjustment that I can tell looking at it. And the instructions give you no adjustment for this. So moving it back and forth, I don't see any way to do that. I've tried bending it a little bit. It doesn't really work. Yeah, it's a little better since I bent it. There you go. Loosening this, you can adjust it up and down, but that is the only adjustment I see for this riving knife. So here's our fence. They tell you to use this fence extension, which is attaches with a couple carriage bolts on those holes like that and use this all the time. I'm not 100% sure why you'd want to use that all the time, but I'll be using this saw for the next couple weeks before we do our total overview and review. And I should have an answer for you what I think about this by then. For now, for the sake of calibrating this and just ease of looking at things, we're going to leave this off. All right, so let's check our fence parallel to our miter slot. And I'll push it over until it just kisses the edge. Right there. And even zoomed out like this, you can see on the end here, the gap is huge. I'll pull you in tighter so you can really see it, but that is a huge gap right there. 
and it gets super tight here. I have another concern. This is a lot of slop. The fence, the fence tightens down this way. There's nothing on this side here that tightens down. When you pull this lever, it pulls this in and it just squeezes from the back side. We'll do our adjustment, but I don't know if we'll get it perfect. We're gonna have to find out here. So we'll get it right where it kisses again. Huge gap. To adjust this parallel and move it is these bolts here. Our included wrench will loosen them. And I can really pivot this thing back and forth now. That's pretty straight right there. Yeah, right back the way it was. I wonder if I tighten down the lever. So now it's locked straight. Now let's tighten these, let's see what that gets us. All right, we're still straight. That is pretty dang close. So leave the fence loose, loosen the nuts, line it up, hold it straight and gently tighten this lever down. So you know it's straight. That's good. Spot on. Now that our blade is aligned, and we'll bump that over to the right just a hair, and we should be good. There you go. Good enough for me. So we're pretty much home free. We got our little plastic end caps. Oops. Where's my mallet? So very last, we got our hose. It attaches to the side of the dust collector there, and then obviously to the blade guard. We're going to attach just this little plastic thing. It goes on the hose, and there's a hole on the end here with a little tiny machine screw. And it's just going to attach here, but it'll be loose. So as we move this in and out, it's always going to keep the hose away from our material that we're feeding while still giving us good dust collection on the top, which I'm pretty excited to see how it works. There you go. So making this video took way more effort than I anticipated. It took a lot longer too. So everything's calibrated, everything is straight, except the riving knife ever so slightly. And I'm gonna say it's usable. The next video, we get into all the functions, everything this thing does, all this cool stuff. We're gonna see how it cuts. We're gonna check this out. It's gonna be cool. Hit the subscribe button. Hit like on this one. If I miss something, I haven't started the second video. Let me know in the comments. I can show you something close up if you need, or we can go over some other topic involved with something in this. So hit me up in the comments, but do it quick because that next video is gonna be out in like two or three weeks after this one releases. So let me know what you guys think about this so far. I think it's pretty cool. It's a little goofy. And there's some cheapo stuff going on. But the customer service was amazing. I give them all the credit in the world for that. Stay tuned. We'll do the next one soon. Thanks for watching.